Saturday. And we are going to do some oil changing and servicing. It's the 23rd of uh, May. Had some requests from people who own LS machines on service. So we're gonna service one of the LS MT573s. Um, there's not a lot of video out there. We, uh, we know that as well. <clears throat> when I first bought these machines, I tried to do a little research, figure it out. Um, and there's zero aftermarket stuff. I, I think the best I found is a fuel filter, maybe the air filters aftermarket. Um, they give you no choices. And then their filters are really outpriced, or overpriced rather. And um, anywho, so we're going to tackle the 573. We're about to do some planning today. Um, Sudan grass sorghum. Um, that's what we feed our cattle and sell uh, down here in the south, Oklahoma, for uh, our cattle in the wintertime. So we've got all the acreage disked up. And um, so we'll get back with you in a minute. We'll get the tractor warmed up, get the oil warm, pull it up here. And uh, we were going to do it up in the barn, but I have the doors down. Uh, repairing the doors so I've got one laying in the way uh, so we'll just do it out here in front of the side of the house like usual and then hopefully here pretty quick we'll have everything being uh, done up in the barn so I'll be back within a minute okay so we're working on the MT573 and we're going to change the oil so you have two drain plugs on the oil pan have one here and one on the other side you want to make sure that you drain both of those oil filter and then you will add the oil here that's where you add it in um, so we like to use Rotella or um, any 1540 that we uh, we prefer, I think this time we're using um, OTR oil that I get from a truck dealer that I buy for our trucking company to change oil with. And so anyways, we'll get set up, get some drain pans and uh, various other things. And we'll blow out the air, clean out the air filters, check the antifreeze. The fuel filters were just serviced not too long ago. Uh, I think this is ready for a 600 hour service and we haven't even had this machine that long. I think we bought this last August, it's May, and we just now started getting into hay season. But it has been in the field for two to three days straight, four days straight, uh, doing hay. And then we uh, disc with it for a couple of days, about 40 acres. And then uh, of course now we're going to plant with it. Um, the other tractor's hooked up what was I to the baler back there but we disconnect all anyways we'll get it all set up and uh, be back okay he's gonna go ahead and drain the oil now it's gonna shoot way out here go ahead let's move your hand fast there it goes and it's pretty black which is pretty common on diesels. I think this holds 2.1 gallons of oil. Let me get you a rag. It holds 2.1 gallons according to the book. You know, we do the oil changes and services on our equipment by the books. You can do it however works best for your farm. That's just how we do it. So no spill oil here. I think it's just about 10 hours shy of its 600 hour service. But today's a good day for us. We had time and knowing us, we'll be out in the middle of the field somewhere and it'll come due and put us in an inconvenient place to do it. So we figured why not get it now? And uh, 10 hours isn't that big a deal. So we'll let that drain out for a little bit and then we'll crack the other side open. Okay, that side is drained out. 
there's a brass ring behind that nut make sure you get your brass rings on there when you're putting the plug back in Xander will tighten that up and wipe it down That's probably good all right and then we'll go ahead and move on over to the other side this whole service takes about I don't know 15 minutes maybe it's not a very long process It's uh, fairly easy, fairly straightforward. Let me turn this around so it's going downhill. Grab that paper towel, Xander. Oh, it's gone. I'll get it. So that it runs to the hole. And that may splash in your face, so be careful. <clears throat> Chance got him tight. It didn't come loose. Here, let me hold it while you pull on it. Chance got him pretty tight. No? Well, there it goes. He got. It. All right. Yeah, Chance probably over tightened that a hair. <clears throat> Just be careful when you, you're facing it, it'll splash out. Try to block some of that splash. No, I'm good. I'm just blocking it. No, it shouldn't come out too fast. There, I put it too bad. Couple drops here on the mat. That's why we use these rubber mats. Then we can power wash them. There you go. So this side doesn't hold much. I think the side after it holds about a quart and a half. I can't remember what I read. Quart, quart and a half on this side. Uh, the pan is split in two because of the drive shaft. So that's why you have two drain plugs. And you definitely want to drain both sides because otherwise you'll have all fresh oil on one side and uh, black filthy oil on the other side. A little windy today. As soon as it gets that tight, some guys let it drain till it quits. We don't. It's be about to put in two gallons of fresh oil so it'll all mix in that's probably good Xander make sure your brass rings up there you can see it up there point that brass ring Xander right there's there. a little brass ring stuck to it yep they tend to stay on there and that's fine by us so we don't have to find them but sometimes they can fall down in your oil pan your drain pan and then when he's done with that, I'll drain the filter real quick, which is directly above. And it does make a small mess, but we use some parts cleaner, brake cleaner after we're done to spray the engine down, dissolve that oil. Then we'll, if it's real bad, we'll wash it off with a hose. Where's that brush? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna grab the filter wrench. Now we only use LS stuff on these machines. Tanner, so pull that to your right just a hair of that black tub. Yeah. Uh, this this way and that way just a little bit. A little more, a little more. It's probably going to go straight down. A little more. The wind's going to push it, so I'm trying to get a little more right there. There it goes. That didn't make too much of a mess. Let that drain out for a second, we'll grab a filter. Okay, so this is the filter number. It is a, um, it's kind of rough, 403-18591. That is an LS filter. There's, putting it on now. Make sure you get the oil on that ring. Tap, put tap your finger down so that use the oil down there. Get it on that rubber seal. Always oil your seal. Otherwise it'll get hot and stick and you'll be a nightmare trying to get that thing off there. Spin it back on. 
no matter how greasy you get it will wipe it off anyway now we write down in a book we have in the house a ledger uh, we're keeping our computer systems for oil changes and service PMs ties you can with two hands I do a little eighth of a turn past hand tight. Never had one leak. Um, the book just says, I think hand tight is what it says. So we try to just give it a little extra smudge. And um, I think that's it on the oil side. So that should be the oil change for that machine. So now we'll come over here and we'll add in the oil. So we'll get 2.1 gallons of oil and we will add to this. So what I like to do is use one of these longer black funnels and just stick it in at a slight angle. It makes it perfect for pouring. Alright, now there's a trick you can pour to this oil so you don't make a mess. And then set that up on the tire. So most people would say all right, I've got a five gallon jug. That hole's gonna be down here, so when I pour it in, then it glugs. Glugs real bad. Anyway, you have trouble with it. So if you put it at the top and pour it in, the air stays at the top and then it pours out smoothly. So Xander will record that. It seems to come out more smoothly. Now, you can measure yours. I usually pour in about a gallon. See, it doesn't glug, it comes out nice and smooth. But this is a five gallon jug, so I'm gonna go just before half and check it. All right, you can't tell, but that's about right here. So we're right at around two gallons, so we'll check it. And, uh, put your cap on that because if that comes off, that's going to make a horrid mess. Now keep in mind at this point we haven't started it so the oil filter is not full. So we're going to get it as close to the full line, start the machine, let it set for a minute, and then check it again. And your switch my sides. Yep. And we'll just check it again. Now I am leaning slightly forward because we're on a downhill here. So when I get done, I'll pull it over on some level ground and check it. So right there, we're, you can't tell literally at the full mark. Yeah, that was a good guess. I'm not that good. <laughs> that was totally a good guess. So right now, we'll start it real quick, have Xander start it. And uh, let's double check our work. Both, but both nuts are tight on the oil pan bolts. Filter's on tight. Um, let's put the oil cap back on. this bucket on the ground in there. Set that in the hole please. And then we set that so it's gonna drip. We just stick it back in here and let it drip. That way you have a mess on the ground. Go ahead and put your cat back on. And have Xander fire it up. Now we're trying to fill the oil filter here. So we want the oil filter full to get a true oil level. And if you can tell we're probably can't tell on camera we're slightly leaning forward on the downhill so when I get it as close to the mark as I can pull back to the there on the level ground and check it um, the barn's got level floors in it so we'll have to worry about all that up there but we're improvising that's what we currently have go ahead pressure light comes on you forgot to put oil in it. It should come on momentarily until the pump picks it up. Give it right around 30 seconds. We should have to get oil in the filter. That's good. It's pretty instantaneous. Those pumps are pretty serious. So we'll let that sit and drain for a minute because that oil is not hot. Okay it's been a few minutes. Um, we'll go ahead and check it while Xander pull it and check it real quick. Um, these are good tractors. Somebody accidentally overfilled the antifreeze level. It's up here. I'll take the screw off and 
drain a little of that out and then I'll power wash this all down. It overflowed when we were working at full, full capacity and uh, just leaked out a little bit from the overflow. No big deal there. Somebody just put too much antifreeze in it. Um, but at least they're checking it. So we'll drain some of that out, get it back down to the medium level. And um, so after, can't really see, put it back in. Now this is the checking after running. You see it's about a quarter of a quart low. So that is where we need to be. Plus we're leaning forward a hair. So we'll add a little bit. We'll add a few glugs as I call it. Not an exact measurement, please don't follow that. We'll put a few glugs in it and we'll back it up over here and let it sit on level ground and check it to be 100% sure. Always do it on level ground, that's obviously the ideal situation. But we don't have that situation, so or I can do. It's probably enough. Until we get it on level ground, we'll check it. Slightly above the full mark, probably not gonna hurt anything, but it's really recommended to be full, not over full. So you definitely wanna try to keep your eye on that. Oh, I forgot that. Put your cat back on always. Always put your cat back on before you start it. Check it one more time, Xander. That drains down pretty much directly into the oil pan. So we're just under the hair, under the full mark. And we are leaning forward, so we're probably full. But I'll have him pull it up here by the Alice and the level ground and let it set. And then we'll check it one last time. And if we need to add any oil, we will. Um, always do this on level ground. Um, 2.1 gallons. Drain both sides of the oil pan. Um, fuel filters, we change every 300 hours. I think the book says 150. Um, I can't remember exactly. Too many machines, too, too many to remember. Um, we change them every 300, that seems to work. By the way, if you have any questions about servicing this with the HS 4040s, or the Hydrostat model 40 horse, we own that machine as well. We've had that one for almost three or four years now. Um, there's really not anything I don't know about that one in particular. Um, I think that one's 1,200 hours on it. Uh, they're great machines. I think that one's 1,200. This one's just hit almost six. So we'll pull it up over here, level ground, and uh, we'll go in and write down our service. Keep good records. Um, if you can't, just remember every 300 hours uh, as a constant view. Yellow pins and write on the filters, date, hours. That seems to help a lot of people. But we uh, we try to keep on top of our maintenance. We need these machines um, as part of our livelihood, so we need these machines to work. So we don't take for granted on our maintenance because it is important. And I've already cleaned with some parts cleaner all that oil off. We sprayed it on there, and it just dissolves the oil. That way it doesn't have oil just sitting there, like dirt and dust. We're a little bit picky on that. We do wash them most of the time after we use them in the fields all day. Uh, we had a giant rainstorm the other day, so they're still fairly clean. But that's how you PM and service a LS Mtron MT573. And uh, good luck if, if anyone needs me to do videos on the grease irks and how to grease it, um, just post in the comments. Uh, either Xander or I or um, Chris, my son-in-law, who does our editing now, uh, we'll try to answer back to you as quickly as we can. Um, we also have a bunch of bucket zerks. Don't take for grand, granted those, especially because we use, there's a bunch. Um, we use the buckets a lot. Um, we haul a lot of hay. Probably use the buckets more than the average human does. So we are pretty picky and we use red um, Mystic Grease. Or you can buy the Lucas Red. It's a very good high. Um, resistance to friction and we try to keep up with that but I mean we use the buckets all the time in the summertime we do you know 10 to 20 thousand hay bales with these tractors split between three and we run the buckets a lot so we try to keep them greased anyway that's how you do it let us know if you like the video thanks